Welcome to William & Mary Law School's Veterans Benefits Clinic channel. The videos on this channel are made by law school students and professors working in the Veterans Benefits Clinic at William & Mary Law School in Williamsburg, Virginia. This channel is not affiliated with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. The information provided in these videos should not be considered legal advice applicable to your specific situation. The purpose of these videos is to give you general information about the veterans' benefits process and common sense suggestions on working within the VA to seek compensation. For more information about the Veterans Benefits Clinic, please visit our website at law.wm.edu veteran. Hello, my name is Mimi and I will be introducing you to the sixth video in a series of videos that is designed to provide helpful information about the Veterans Affairs claims process. The videos are made in conjunction with the Veterans Benefits Clinic at the William & Mary School of Law and are not affiliated with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. The purpose of this video is to provide a brief summary of the nexus element of a veteran's disability benefits claim and how it can be proven. Let's start by reviewing the three things that a veteran must prove in order to file a successful claim for disability benefits through the VA. An in-service event, a current disability, and a nexus, or connection, between the two. First, what exactly does nexus mean? The nexus that the VA is looking for is simply a causal connection between the injury, sickness, exposure, or whatever else that the veteran suffered while in the military, and the diseases or symptoms from which the veteran currently suffers. This bridge between the things that happened while the veteran was in service and the condition currently affecting the veteran is often very difficult to prove. To some extent, the law recognizes the difficulty facing the veteran in proving the nexus and therefore requires the VA to give the veteran the benefit of the doubt. If the veteran can prove that there is at least a 50% chance that the current disability and the in-service events are causally linked, the vet will have satisfied the proof requirement for the nexus element. The language that the VA uses as a standard for the 50% threshold is as likely as not. Put simply, if what happened to the veteran while she was in the military, as likely as not, caused the veteran's current disability, she will succeed with her claim. For example, let's say Joe spent his time in the military jumping out of airplanes and now suffers arthritis in his knees. If Joe's doctor says that it is, as likely as not, that Joe's arthritis today was caused by him jumping out of planes in the military, then Joe will have proven the nexus requirement for his claim. A direct service connection means that the event the veteran experienced on active duty directly led to the disability experienced now. For instance, if a roadside bomb went off near Joe, and now Joe suffers from traumatic brain injury, the connection is direct. The bomb directly caused Joe's traumatic brain injury to occur. The second way of establishing a nexus is through chronicity. This method of linking a veteran's current disability to his service can be used if the disability the veteran suffered from in service was chronic. Chronic conditions are long-lasting conditions. The VA has a list of conditions it considers to be chronic. Sometimes a veteran can suffer from a chronic condition and show no symptoms of the disability at all. It may be years before the symptoms resurface. If the veteran can show that he suffered from symptoms of the chronic disability on active duty and currently suffers from that same chronic disability now, his current disability will be linked to his service. This also requires that nothing happen between service and now to lead to this chronic condition. Obviously, good medical records from active duty and current treatment will be important to substantiate this type of claim. A doctor should be able to look at the symptoms reported on active duty and give an opinion that the symptoms are indeed those exhibited by the chronic disability the veteran currently suffers from. Third, a nexus can be proven through the continuity of symptomology. This occurs when symptoms that the veteran had while on active duty have plagued her ever since. Unlike chronicity, these symptoms never go away, but persist and continue on, sometimes getting worse over time. For instance, say Sally suffered from undiagnosed knee pain on active duty. Ten years after active duty, she has knee pain in the same place that has steadily gotten worse and is diagnosed as patellofemoral syndrome. Based on Sally's medical records and talking to Sally, Sally's doctor will be able to say that the pain she suffers from today is the same as the pain that she suffered from on active duty and link her current patellofemoral syndrome to her active duty service. 
Fourth, a nexus can be proven through a delayed direct service connection. That is, if something happened while the vet was on active duty, but the symptoms did not show up until later or even much later, but are clearly caused by the duty event, then nexus can be proven. For instance, jumping up and down from large platforms or equipment may not hurt an 18-year-old's joints. However, jumping up and down from large equipment many times a day, every day for 20 years, can cause arthritis and other joint problems as a veteran gets older. A good doctor who can review a veteran's service records and identify physical stressors in service that a veteran experienced may be able to link those stressors to his current disability. Finally, a veteran can prove a claim by showing aggravation, that a pre-existing condition worsened because a veteran was on active duty. While the VA most commonly denies claims because the veteran simply didn't prove a nexus, they also deny claims for other reasons relating to nexus. If, for example, the VA schedules a medical exam for the veteran and he doesn't go, then the VA can deny the claim. The VA can also deny a claim if they believe that the service did not aggravate a pre-existing condition, but rather that the condition worsened as the natural progression of the disease. The VA recognizes that some things are commonly caused by service in the military, so they created some presumptions that may help a veteran in proving a nexus. If a veteran files a claim within one year of ending active service, some diseases are presumed to have come from time spent in active duty. For example, if you have served in the Gulf War in Iraq and now suffer from fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, or irritable bowel syndrome, these conditions and your service in the Gulf will be presumptively linked. This demonstrates that the VA recognizes that service in the Gulf has caused a number of diseases that are often undiagnosable or are commonly diagnosed as those listed above. Another common presumption is given to veterans who served in Vietnam. Due to the use of the defoliant Agent Orange in Vietnam during the Vietnam War, any veteran that served during the Vietnam War in the boundaries of Vietnam is presumed to have been exposed to Agent Orange. Additionally, the VA recognizes that diabetes type 2 is a disease that is commonly linked to Agent Orange exposure. Any veteran who served in Vietnam during the war and later suffers from diabetes type 2 is presumed to have gotten diabetes type 2 from his exposure to Agent Orange while in country. The VA presumes there is a nexus in these situations for the veteran. The veteran does not have to prove his event in service in this case, that he was exposed to Agent Orange. The VA presumes that he was if he meets certain criteria. And the veteran does not have to get a doctor to say that his diabetes type 2 was caused by Agent Orange. The VA presumes that it was. There are several such presumptions listed in the Code of Federal Regulations that the VA gives to certain veterans for certain diseases. Sometimes there are time limits for the VA to grant a presumption. For instance, hearing loss that occurs within one year of leaving active duty is presumed to come from a veteran's active duty service. As another example, multiple sclerosis that occurs within seven years of leaving active duty service is presumed to be caused by a veteran service. Once again, these presumptions can be found in the Code of Federal Regulations at Title 38 in Sections 3.307 through 3.309. For more information, check out both the Department of Veterans Affairs website at www.va.gov and the William & Mary Veterans Benefits Clinic website at law.wm.edu slash veterans. I also encourage you to watch the next video in this series. Thanks for watching and have a good day.